This video is going to primarily focus on sizing blowers and compressors for electric boost because that's what we've been screwing around with lately. But uh, the concepts here and the information here is useful for all kinds of sizing of different compressors. It's not going to get into the turbine side of uh, uh, turbos, but you'll get the idea. First of all, and I meant to do this in my last video, but I forgot, I owe an apology to the RC guys because the RC guys are like two brushless motors as the porn industry is to video. They're doing some incredible advancements in terms of uh, uh, both the controllers themselves and the motors. So there, there's been, especially after talking to this guy Thomas at uh, Castle Creations, he was a huge help in learning about the current technologies that are involved in RC cars, the controllers, the, the motors themselves, but the controllers in particular, there's some really cool stuff you can do. And there's some motors that I think are going to be sized fairly well for what we're going to try to do with the Vortec. So let's look at the KO3 turbo electric thing that we did on that uh, 2008 Harley. And why, as sad as this is, why it will never make boost. So here's a compressor map. And uh, you can see here on the uh, x-axis is volume flow. This one's measured in cubic meters per second. Uh, the y-axis here is the pressure ratio. So the pressure ratio is basically how many times atmospheric pressure you have. So if atmospheric pressure at sea level is generally accepted to be around 14.7 PSI, that's a pressure ratio of one. To get to a pressure ratio of two, which will be right here between 1.8 and 2.2, uh, you would simply double it. So you'd have 14.7 pounds of boost. And you know, it works all throughout the, the whole range. This map goes up insanely to 4.2. I, you know, I mean, we're not talking diesels here. Anyway, so let's look at why that little KO3 is never going to make boost on anything. Sure, it, it'll make power on a lot of smaller things, but it's never gonna make eight pounds, 10 pounds. It's never gonna make anything significant. And here's why. So the motor that we used uh, spins 60,000 RPM. Let's assume that 60,000 RPM was the speed it actually reached. We don't really know. I can tell you that the, the current draw was 36 amps when it was on the, the Harley. And I think the reason for that was, was that the uh, engine taking air in was taking load off of the brushless motor. So let's assume 60,000. So this, this map starts at 63.7 thousand. And it goes all the way up to, I don't know, this line's not labeled, but if we go by this line, 195,000 RPM. So, you know, that little guy is intended to spin pretty fast. But anyway, let's assume that the line would be just underneath here. Well, first, let me give you the sort of proverbial lay of the land. This line here is the surge line, okay? If you start crossing over to the left of the surge line, you're basically surging the compressor, the, the flow becomes unstable. If you start going off to the right, you end up with choke and essentially the efficiency drops you can see that these very faint circles hopefully i can pull them out in editing but these very faint circles uh, are what's called efficiency islands so if you're inside of this efficiency island you're 73 percent efficient as far as antibiotic efficiency and that's something that you can google on your own but that's the overall efficiency of the blower our compressor in this case. So that's the 73% island, this is 72, this is 70, 68, 65, 60, and so on. So anyway, so we would be somewhere right around here towards the bottom, and if you follow this arc, it would sort of kind of crap out at about point, let's just estimate, 0 0.035 meters per second cubed. So cubic meters per second. So by the way, let's talk a little bit about that. So cubic meters per second and CFM are roughly the same types of units of measurement. Not particularly good, not as good as mass airflow because air density can vary depending on temperature, humidity, all kinds of weather related factors, uh, barometric pressure, etc. So anyway, so but this one will convert roughly to CFM, which is more understandable for those of us here in the United States. So CFM, so let's talk about CFM for a second. 1.4 CFM is generally accepted to be what you need to generate a horsepower in an internal combustion engine. So if this line were to peter out at 0.035, that means that's roughly eh, 74 CFM. And then uh, you take that and you convert it to horsepower, dividing it by 1.4, you end up with uh, just over 50 horsepower, and you take in the parasitic loss from the drivetrain of the Harley, which I'm going to guess is around 12%. 
and you end up at 45 horsepower, which is pretty much right in the ballpark of what we measured, oddly enough. So the math works. That's the exciting part, at least to me. Going back to this little deal, um, it, why will it never make boost? Let's say you say, let's say you put it on a motor that you don't, you know, that doesn't have any significant airflow requirements. A small 250 cc bike, for example. If you were to do that, it's still not going to make well any real significant boost, solely because at a fixed speed of 60,000, which would be just under again under the 63.7 k line here, the most you're going to get is maybe a pressure ratio of like 1.1 which I've got my trusty little calculator here just out of frame. 0.1 is the amount of boost you're making. 0.1 times 14.7. Obviously, you could do this in your head pretty easily, but it's a whopping one and a half pounds of boost. What we actually saw on the Harley where we started the pole was around, you know, 2300 RPM, if I remember right. That's where it saw peak power. So it was already starting to peter out right when we started the pole. So this little guy just ain't going to do it as a, as a turbo, as a supercharger, as a boost device. So let's talk about the Whipple that's on the LTD right now. It's truly a Lysholm. It's a first generation Whipple. Lysholm, the name, was bought by Vortec. The, the rotor technology, the screw technology is used by Whipple. So you can call it Whipple, you can call it a Lysholm, whatever. But it's a 2.3 liter, so that's what the 2300 up here denotes. Anyway, this graph, the x-axis, or this, this compressor map, the x-axis is in cubic meters per minute as opposed to cubic meters per second, like uh, the KO3 map was. So it's a little bit different, but pressure ratio is basically the same. Uh, these sort of kind of more vertical lines, because it's a positive displacement blower, it's not actually a blower, it's technically a compressor. Roots type or a TVS would be a blower. They don't compress internally, that's the difference. Uh, turbo also compresses internally. But anyway, going back to this, so this is rotor speed, but these lines are, are more vertical simply because it's positive displacement. There's really no place else for the air to go except out. So anyway, let's take a good look at this thing. So we have, you know, 14,000 rotor RPM is all the way up here. Currently in the car, I've got a 2.7 inch diameter pulley and an eight inch crank pulley giving me a pulley ratio of about 2.91 to 1. 5,500 RPM, to use round numbers, is right around 16,000. So 16,000 is obviously off the map into what would be the choke zone on a turbo. And in fact, I'm sure it is choking. I'm pushing it about as hard as I can. I shift the car at about 6,000 RPM. Uh, so at 6,000 RPM... times 2.91 for our pulley ratio, 17,460 RPM. So that thing is really, you know, pretty far off the map. It's basically kind of on the edge of becoming more of a heat pump than uh, a usable compressor at that point. I really can't turn it any harder. They, they give a max absolute speed on this one of 13,500. Uh, but the exact same design from Whipple is got a max speed of 18,000. So, you know, it is what it is. Take you know, so far, it hasn't blown up. That's all I can tell you. So again, 17,460 is up here. So I shift the car at about 6,000 RPM. Uh, fall back, it's a power glide, so fall back on the shift is about down to 5,200. So let's look at where it would be at about 5,500 RPM. So at 5,500 RPM, we're spinning roughly 5,500 RPM times 2.91 gives us 16,000. So 16,000 again is, is all the way over here and we're running close to 14 pounds, eh, 14, 15 pounds of boost somewhere in there. So basically a pressure ratio of two to one. So that's gonna be you know off the map up here. If we look at these efficiency islands, like from the other map, starts at 65 and where it probably would be would be somewhere around the 50 to 52 if you were to extend this. So it's probably only about 50 to 52% efficient. So I really am pushing that thing pretty hard. By the way, uh, 30 cubic meters per minute translates to roughly 1,060 CFM. So at 1,060 CFM, let's say it's actually moving closer to about 1,150. Let's use our trusty calculator to figure out what that means. 1,150 divided by 1.4 
gives us roughly 821 horsepower. So that's give or take depending on fuel and, you know, weather and everything else. And I, I've probably actually exceeded that in mine shaft air where the air is super dense. Um, and there are times when it's, you know, if I'm running on pump gas and I'm timing limited and it's hot outside, you know, the car might make as little as 720 or 750 horsepower. So the fair range of power, depending on weather and fuel, is probably, yeah, let's say 722 pushing 900. So the car has gone a best of 983 at 140 miles an hour, a little bit over uh, on Q16. And on pump gas, I think it was a 988, I believe, at like 138. The math works here as well. So let's go look at why I like that Vortex so much for an electric supercharger. So here is a Vortex S trim compressor map. Now, I don't really know what trim that blower that I have is. It's truth be told, it's a display unit. So we're going to take it apart and that's going to be another video. And we're going to see what's in there and what we can work with. But I was told by a guy over at Vortec that most likely it's an S-Trim, and that's one of their more ubiquitous units. So let, let's look at its compressor map. So this is the compressor map I was able to find for it. Uh, there's very clearly a surge line over here, and it's, it's more like the turbo map than it is like the Whipple map. You'll notice that the speeds have these nice little arcs at, you know, whatever the, the compressor uh, wheel RPM is. But here's why the Vortec would actually work for this. The bottom line is only 20,000 RPM. The top line is 50,000 RPM. So we're talking about a centrifugal compressor that is a relatively low speed unit, which is important because in my research, a commenter pointed me towards a guy on YouTube, I believe his name is Tesla 500. Uh, he did some power tests with a, a large turbo and uh, he had some interesting data, but he also led me to research one particular thing. And apparently there is, in, in compressor world, power to turn the compressor wheel increases with the cube of RPM. So it's not just a, a squared relationship. It is a steep freaking line. So we want to stay kind of more reasonable since we're practically limited to so far in my research anyway unless somebody knows of another motor they can post it in the comments so far the most suitable candidate i found is an 800 kv which uh, kv in rc world means for every volt you feed the motor you get 800 rpm uh, but it's an 800 kv i believe it's uh 8,000 or 10,000 watt rated. It's about, if I remember right, it's like two and a half inches in diameter and the body's like four and a half inches long. But that thing can generate bursts of over 10 horsepower, which just kind of blows my mind. And theoretically has a peak speed of 45,000 RPM, which would be all the way up here. However, you can't actually hit that peak speed with its uh, voltage rating. Technically, you could hit 40,000 RPM, which is all the way up here. However, I still don't think we're going to be able to do that. I think most likely we're going to be somewhere around the 30,000 RPM line. Um, and let's look at what flow the car is going to require. So going back to the LTD, the LTD makes roughly 500 horsepower at the flywheel naturally aspirated without any boost. This uh, x-axis on this particular compressor map is rated in mass flow. So mass flow here is, is much more useful because it does take into account air density. Uh, you, you don't have to, to kind of guess what the air density is, is in your particular locale. So let's say it's, you know, you're, you're in Colorado and you're, you know, three miles up, or actually it's about a mile up, I believe. Uh, your air density is going to be different than uh, on the east coast of the U.S. where you're practically at sea level. So anyway, so that this is a much more useful unit of measurement for measuring power. And the way you can kind of interpret between this one and uh, potential horsepower is just simply multiply it by 10. So you have 10 uh, pounds of airflow, pounds per minute of airflow. Uh, you have 100 horsepower. So the LTD 
makes, like I said, naturally aspirated, it's already making 500 horsepower, which would put us right at this 50 line here. Okay, so the electric supercharger that's made out of the Vortec would start effectively here. So let's look up at the 30,000 RPM line because we do know that we have basically a fixed maximum speed. Uh, and let's assume it to be 30,000 RPM. I'll be thrilled if it makes more, but you know, you got to be kind of pessimistic and you're not going to be disappointed, right? So here's that 30,000 RPM line. So let's look over. So we're at 500 horsepower here. This is the 600 horsepower line and we have a pressure ratio of about 1.35. Let's see how much boost that is. 14.7 multiply it times 0.35 that's about 5 PSI. So at about 5 PSI, it's saying we should make 600 horsepower. Well, let's find out. Let's take 500 horsepower. Let's multiply that with a pressure ratio of 1.35. That's generally the way it works, assuming that you're not screwing up your air density too badly or um, you're not timing limited. So let's just take 500 and multiply it times 1.35 and we end up with 675. So you're not gonna, that's not our friend. That's not where we're gonna end up here. We're gonna end up a little bit further over until the, the, the two numbers cross over, until the two numbers intersect. And what I mean by that is when the reasonable pressure ratio matches about what we can calculate that we're gonna get horsepower wise. So again, let's take a look, let's say, this line will probably crash into the 1.3 pressure ratio line at about 650. Let's try that. 500 times 1.3 gives us exactly 650. Numerically speaking, the S trim should be still reasonably efficient. It's going to be just outside this 65% uh, efficiency island but it should give us roughly 650 horsepower. Now again, I've already been pessimistic in the RPM that we can reach, and I like to be pessimistic here, so let's say realistically we can expect maybe 600 horsepower. However, that's still five PSI, and that's still a gain of 100 horsepower on something that already makes 500 horsepower. That would be a great place to start, and then maybe we do a second one, but there's only one way to find out, Let's build this thing and see.